welcome back to part two of the Luka Doncic player study. In part one, we looked at the handler tools which Luka uses to beat the drop coverage. As with part one, we're going to be focused on solutions against the up to touch, free throw line and deep drop, still with the ball handler's defender going over, but now looking at how the screener can help facilitate and beat the coverage. These different solutions we called tools. And in part one, we looked at conventional things a screener can do when playing against the drop. But the focus was on Luca's individual abilities as the handler to beat the coverage. In this video, we will look at different things that the screener can do, which when combined with Luca as the handler, lead to some great tools and some great solutions when playing against drops. Put a spell on you. One of the advantages that we see from playing against the drop is that it creates an instant two-on-one advantage, which is something we simply don't get from other coverages such as a switch. One way that we can convert this advantage is by the screener sprinting and getting behind the drop man, typically finishing by receiving a lob pass, which Luca is so skilled at making. To create the two-on-one advantage, we see the screener using the hit and hold technique, which we spoke about in part one Credit to coach Liam Flynn for this piece of terminology. The route used to get to the basket on the roll is most typically a curved one. This means that as the screener rolls, by rolling with a slight C shape, they create space between themselves and the ball before then completing the curve with their finish at the rim. For the most part, Luca's lob passes are really accurate. This is where the importance of knowing your teammate in the pick and roll is critical. Some players are able to get up higher than others. The reason for this turnover, however, is a tactical one and not a technical one. With the low man committing to tagging and stopping the roll, the throwback pass would be a better solution to get an open shot. Likewise, Luca needs to assess the defenders and know the personnel. Against a smaller low man, the lob might be possible, but with LeBron here, the lob is simply not a viable solution. Here we can see how Luca reads the low man so well. With the low man not committing to the tag, it means that that lob pass is the correct pass to make in this situation. Here the Mavs play out of Shake's pick and roll spacing with a two side front side and a single side back side. If the back side player has gravity and is a great shooter, then naturally the defender is going to be attached to them which opens up the lob. Additionally, by shaking and lifting from corner to wing, this can prevent the tag. Luca's tools as the ball handler enable the strategy to be effective. Here he comes through a complete stop, giving time for the screener to get behind. You can also see how some tools are combined, such as the snake, which we looked at in part one. In this last clip, we can see Burgos use the push coverage against Luca, sending him to the sideline while the screener's defender sits in the drop. To counter the push coverage, Real Madrid flipped the screen, which is a separate tool we will look at at a later date. However, the on-ball defender does a great job recovering in front, neutralizing the offense. Luca recognizes this really well by immediately flowing into a get, and then playing against the drop coverage on this get, they are able to beat it using the same tool. Now looking at other ways that Luca as the handler and his teammate as the screener can combine and looking at different types of pocket pass we have. Technically the lob is one type of pocket but we're going to be looking at early or late pockets and any pass to the roller which is basically not a lob. The early pocket passes typically occur when the drop man comes into Luca's line between the ball and the basket opening up the pass to the roll man. And you can see this here with the drop man committing too heavily to Luca on the ball. In this clip against Olympiakos, we can see an extreme example of the hit and hold opening up the really easy pocket. Here we can see the Mavs play out of elbow pick and roll. Some terminology I use from Zico Coronel, where there is a single side front side ahead of the ball handler and the two side behind Luca. When making the early pocket, the rolling screener must think what's next. Here with the low man going to tag, 
the decision must now be to pass to punish the help. This creates a nice domino sequence with the extra leading into the shot. With this turnover, this again goes back to the importance of knowing your teammate. While these pockets are great for mobile bigs with good hands such as Porzingis and Kleber, playing with Boban means this tool is probably not the best solution with a big who prefers getting the ball on the late pocket as we can see in this clip. Going back to the equation at the start of this video, sometimes multiple tools can be used in the same possession. Here we can see Luca uses the hostage dribble to keep his defender on his back, then making the late pocket to the open roll man. The slip is something more commonly used against switches, hedges, traps, but also against the drop it can be particularly effective because it gives the screener a head start on the roll, enabling him to then get behind the drop man as we have looked at previously. Especially for an extremely dynamic guard such as Luca, sometimes just getting out of the way and not screening, giving him more space, can then lead to great things happening. On many of these cues, you'll see the slip then lead to typically a lob pass or an early or late pocket. <laughs> The decision for players to either slip or stay and smash by making contact can be quite a difficult one. But certainly any time the on-ball defender's hips are opened, we do not need to screen because the advantage already exists. By slipping, this is the easiest way to convert the advantage and then get behind the drop. Here we can see a great slip caused by Gary Harris's open stance, which then leads to the tag on the roller. This is where Luca needs to make that throwback pass to the open player. Touchscreens are a concept I learned from Ross McMaines. He has a great episode on the basketball podcast. Touchscreens are very similar to the slip in regard to they give the screener a chance to get behind the drop. However, they are different in terms of the screener makes a small bit of contact. This is typically just a touch, hence the name touchscreen. Here we can see an Iverson cut for Luca, typically followed by a wedge with KP then using a touchscreen. This was something the Mavs used a lot this year to create some great scoring opportunities. Here the Mavs use a touchscreen as a late clock option. However, this is still neutralized. This is where Luca has countless tools in his individual bag flowing to his step back to get a great shot. Playing against the drop coverage means that the pick and pop can be a great solution simply due to the reason that it creates a closeout for the drop defender. This can then lead to open shots or driving opportunities to attack the closeout. Our, our director James Dippick of the party no Lucas passes to his screening teammate are right on the money, straight to the pocket for their shot and often, by passing quickly off the dribble, such as in this clip, it gets the ball from A to B much faster than always relying on having to put both hands on the ball. The gravity caused by the threat of a shooting big man also creates opportunities for Luca to drive it. Here you can see Adams caught in two minds with the threat of Pozingas beyond the arc. They got Wes Matthews for a foul, his first. And if the opponent is the Clippers, the good chance that's going to happen as Porzingis. I'm very specific with my use of the ghost screen terminology. Defining this as when the screener does not make contact, but escapes to a point beyond the three-point line. This can be used against many coverages and the confusion caused by the lack of screening contact and the decision on how to guard it creates His many scoring opportunities for Luka. Gortat screen is some terminology coming from efficient source and this is named after the Polish hammer where the screener will then begin their role and screen their own defender, i.e. screening the drop, creating space for Luka to get an open uncontested finish. I didn't see many clips of the Mavs using this in the regular season, so expect Coach Carlisle to use this more as a solution for free for line and deep drop coverages next season. In our last section, we will look at punishing who helps, i.e. punishing tags through kick-out passes. This was also something we looked at in part one. 
but here you can see all the clips are examples of tools being used that we have covered in part one and part two with the last kick out being used as a solution to then get a great shot. The kick out is only available as an option if the off ball players are not standing in three in a row spacing with the ball, the defender and them in a straight line. Traditionally, on a baseline drive, the corner is always filled. But by lifting out, it actually breaks the three in a row and then allows a nice domino sequence to be used. Earlier tonight before this game started, you thought it had a chance to be down the wire and special. Feels that way, it's clear. We spoke about some of the rare occasions Luca made bad decisions against the drop coverage, which were typically when he was forcing passes to the roll man and not reading the help. Most of the time, however, he's making the right decision and getting the ball to the right place at the right time to punish the help. Here you can see a beautiful pass from his time with Real Madrid with that one hand pass straight from the dribble going at great speed to the teammate spotting up in the corner. One strategy the defense can use to disrupt the ball handler is the bluff. Here CJ McCollum does this perfectly by showing help, but then recovering to his check and picking off the pass that Luca makes. Most of the time, however, Luca does an excellent job reading the warning signs of the defense and making the correct decision. If you enjoyed this player study series, Look out for further editions where we look at solutions against different types of coverage. Be sure to follow us on social media as well as subscribing to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.